Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. I'm your host, Colleen Witt, and today we have very special guest comedian, actor, writer, Black Jesus himself, Slink Johnson is in the building. But you have another title that I missed because I have a very short-term memory, guys. Can you can you say it for our listeners? Well, actually, Colleen, there's several other titles. However, however, I'll just hold it to a couple of them. I'm also a certified slap, you know what I mean, <laughs> S-L-A-P, uh, that's something like a pimp. And the master of the West African monkey spank technique. What is that? Well, you know, it's it's it's, it's an art form originating in West Africa, man. I, I traveled back to West Africa to, you know, get more in touch with my roots and found out that, you know, I'm I'm very, very deep in Africa. You know, I, I actually found out my, my African name. What is it? I, I need you to say it with me. What is it? Um, umbapu. Um. Say, I'll um, listen to you say it. Umbatu. Umbatu. Kumgichu. Kumgichu. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Umbatu. Umbatu. Kumgichu. Kumgichu. I'm an idiot. I just got that. <laughs> okay, guys. Um. So what will you be... <laughs> yes. Um. Umbatu. Kumgichu. <laughs> All right, so what are you going to be feeding me as your broke dish today? Okay, today my broke dish is a staple in the impoverished community, man. I mean, this this it, 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 it's, it's, it's damn near delicacy for some, you okay. know what I mean? But today we're having bologna sandwiches, a good old fried bologna sandwich. However, thanks to the magic of, of Hollywood, we're going to make, we're going to dress it up a little bit mm -hmm. with a little bit of nice, fine, sharp cheddar cheese and some lettuce. particular about having real cheese and lettuce that's that's like real legit i was because you know you add the lettuce to it you kind of you, you you at least get like three of you, you you got all the four food groups yeah you got all the four food groups right here yeah you yeah. know what i mean so you know you got your dairy you got your bread you got your uh meat and you got your you your, your vegetables so you know again this is very healthy struggle meal a lot of nl nfl players were raised off this you know what i never even when you think of the NFL players, you never even think that about that. They didn't That's always crazy. have protein shakes and <laughs> shit like that. The motherfuckers, they, they ain't uh, trife. Well, while you cook this dish, why don't you take me back to what was going on when you was eating the bologna sandwiches? Oh, man, it was a trill time in life, man. Your boy was show. You know, I, you know, uh, fresh out of YA, you know, I had uh, went to the California authorities for a little while, you know what I'm saying? And I had to uh, come California home. Youth Authorities? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. that? That's the junior penitentiary. That's the <laughs> penitentiary for minors here in California. You know what I'm saying? Some people call it gladiator school, man. Some people just call it YA. Shout out to all my YA babies. Pastor Robles, what's up, baby? You know what I'm talking about? We in here. But, you know, I was fresh out of YA. I, was, I went in a boy. I came out a man as far as age goes. And, you know, I, it, it wasn't a whole lot of handouts. It wasn't no help. Of course, I had my mom. She always been a rock in my life. She's been always been in my corner. But, you know, as a man, you got to do things for yourself, man. So, you know. I got out of jail, man. And What'd you yeah. go in for? And then I just have to address this. For all you guys that have not had the opportunity to meet Slink in person, he is so tall. Like, he is definitely the tallest guest. He When he walked in the door, I was like, I don't know if you're going to clear that door. And he, like, touched it. That's how tall he is. So as a teenager, were you this tall? Yeah, I was pretty tall, man. I was into the wrong things. I was when I was young. And I'm gonna use this little spatula thing because you know I don't want everybody to be like well, I don't know his hands, man. I know where they been. You know where they been because I've been here for the past two hours. But I'm gonna use this here for the sake of all them German folks out there that be acting funny and shit. But well, hold on, nigga, this is a struggle meal, nigga. If you struggling, you ain't worried about my hands. But we gonna keep this shit going. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, when I was young, I, I went to YA for a robbery. I did. I was a young misguided kid, man. I just, you know, I used to run with some guys who mischievous. I like to say we were juvenile delinquents. We were mischievous juvenile delinquents, and I was doing some stuff 
that, you know, put my life on the line a lot of times. And I got cracked doing a robbery. And it took me a while to realize that I, 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 I'm really no good as a thug. I'm a very, very, very unlucky, unsuccessful thug. And, you know, I just like doing thug shit. You know, I just wanted to be part of a, part of some part of a, a group of people that was doing some shit. But, you know, I should have been, while I was out there robbing people, I fucked up. While I was out there robbing people, I should have been somebody small forward on the basketball team. But, you know, I wasn't really into basketball like that. Yeah, because you're so tall. But what city were you, are you from? I grew up in Inglewood. Between I grew oh, you're up between, an L.A. native. I grew up between Inglewood. No, I'm, I, no, I was born in Arkansas. Okay. I was born in a little small town in Arkansas. Where my mother remarried and moved us out here when I was 10 years old. Oh, okay, okay. So I've been here since I was 10. And I grew up in Inglewood, between Inglewood and South L.A. I went to school in Inglewood and spent a lot of my time in South L.A. And, you know, I'm L.A. baby, you know. And, and when I should have been, like, playing small forward for the Inglewood – uh, Sentinels, Inglewood High. Mm. I I played left pistol for the Inglewood Carjackers. <laughs> I was I was playing. I feel left like pistol. you're so big. I would assume that like out of all industries, definitely Robin or anything criminal ass criminalish, like you would definitely be the one that would get caught. Man, they catch so me big. all the time. They catch me all the time. And then they put me in the lineup with four Mexicans. You know they're gonna get me. <laughs> you know they're gonna get me. So then, all right. So take me to the so so you're you just get out of juvie, juvenile. What is no, it like? No, that's a just ju- why. Like that ain't you- that's parole, baby. That's state. That ain't that ain't that ain't the halls. That's past the juvenile halls. That's why, baby. So that's like a li- a jail for minors. <laughs> that's pr- a prison for minors. You got parole. You got to go in front of the parole board. What? Yeah, man. And at the time, did you know you were gonna get into comedy, or was is this like the beginning of you? When you get out of jail, what happens? Uh, when I got out of jail, you know, I, I had a few jobs. You know, like most guys will, we get a few jobs here and there. But you know, I, I never was good on my jobs because you know I've always been kind of like this free spirit. You know, I've always been a clown. I've always been a class clown. I've always been a jokester. You know. A lot of times I don't take everything too serious. So, you know, I never could keep a job too long, you know. So I was hustling and doing different things to try to, you know, to uh, uh, supplement my income. However, you know. Like what? Uh, you know, selling some stuff. Okay. Getting people stuff that they wanted. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so then take me to the next chapter. What's that next milestone after you're working all these jobs and hustling like the next chapter, man, is uh, I jumped on the mic. I jumped on the mic because my first aspiration for con- my first aspiration for entertainment, rather, was hip hop and rap. You know what okay. I'm saying? I was signed to Too Short as a rapper. You know, back in 1997, 19- okay. he signed me, and I traveled with him for a little while. So you were rapping the whole time you were working these odd jobs? Uh, a little bit. I was, I was, I was working my way up to that. I was writing. I wasn't really taking it seriously. You know what I'm saying? I started writing raps back in 1986, and around 1994, that's when I like started writing them. Mm-hmm. I really started writing and started getting into the studio. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. around '97, I was about ready. You know what I mean? How'd you cross paths with Too Short? Oh man, one of my best friends, who's like a cousin to me, is actually Too Short's first cousin. Okay. So you know, it was like only a matter of time before that happened. And you know, my boy Young E, you know him and Short always been cousins, but. He took me to short at a time when he felt like, okay, G, ready now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. you know, he saw I was serious about what I was doing. Because a lot of times I can get into something and be real into it, and I lose interest oh, okay. quick. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, tend to held on, I tend to hold on to my hip-hop aspirations, and I got better and better. And then one day he took me to short, and shit, short was digging what I was doing, and he handed me over to my other partner, Kiki, who actually ex- executive produced my my demo project, and then I uh, got signed over to Short. Wow. And then you get a nice check? No. At the time? No. I mean, at the time, at the time, it was, it was, it was nice at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, however, in hindsight, it wasn't too much, but hey, you know, coming from where I was, yeah. Coming from the point I was coming from, it was like fucking right. Yeah, it and, was and great. You're, you're doing what you love. So, what did you do with the money, and what happened with that chapter? Like, like it wasn't too much. Like literally, I think I put a down payment on the car for my baby mama. Mm-hmm. Bought me a couple of trinkets and some bullshit. And mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was broke again. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to put out the record? 
Nah, nah. It didn't come out. It didn't come out through Jive, but I actually just bootlegged it myself and made an authorized bootleg version <laughs> of your own record. Yeah, I authorized the bootleg of it. Fuck it. I'm gonna get it out there. Few people got it. It's in a few. It's in a few trunks around the country. You know what I'm saying? I hit. The, you know, I hit the hit the streets with my homeboy Problem. My young my young boy Problem. I met him in Atlanta when I was down there with Short. Prob got me out on the street. We started hitting state to state, Philly, uh, Atlanta, New York. You know what I'm saying? Just going to all these different places, jumping on corners, selling this tape. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then, at what point do you check out of the music business? Well, I never really checked out. I never really checked out. It kind of just didn't didn't materialize how I wanted it to in the time frame that we all imagine for ourselves. Of you know what I'm saying? Especially so, when you're young. You know, so the rap dreams, it didn't necessarily die, but the opportunity and the 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 life was kind of slowing down for me because real life was taking place. You know, I had a, a, a son now, you know what I mean? And um, my son can't eat these raps, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So that actually kind of put me in a rut for a while, you know what I mean? Because, again, I, I worked a few jobs, and my last job I had, I got fired. And I remember going home. I was crying like a motherfucker. I'm on the bus crying. Like real tears? Real tears, crying. Like, damn, I can't get right. What the fuck is wrong with me? And I'm just, I came to the conclusion that I can't work a conventional nine to five. I can't work for nobody. Not like that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I had to figure out something else. So I started selling weed. Mm-hmm. And it was working a little bit. You know, it was cool. It was paying some bills, you know, uh, making sure I had some cheese for my bologna. Because I was still eating bologna. Oh. Was make sure I had some cheese on it, you know what I mean? Now, was your baby mama at the time starting to to, to kind of stress you out about, like, finances? Or where is she just, just I, holding tight? I, I don't want to blame that on her. I'm not going to say she stressed me out about finances. We was in that thing together, and shit's hard on her. So, you know, of course she's going to verbalize her angst. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, again, I don't want to make her out to be a bad person or nothing. I mean, shit, she's, you know, she pulling the load. Shit tough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that definitely uh, uh, added to, you know, a little bit of stress on my behalf. However, I'll, I'll never blame her because, you know what I'm saying, when you the one doing everything or taking care of shit, you goddamn right. You, yeah. you know, you're going to feel a certain type of way. So, yeah. you know. So she was. So your baby mom at the time was also like working and taking yeah, care. Yeah, she was of working. She was taking care of business. She was doing it right. I got the classic little story. You know, niggas had these rap dreams and shit. Mm-hmm. And while your baby mama growing up and, and and taking care of business and doing shit, we be little boys till we about thirty five. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was it was a typical thing for me. You know, she's always been straight, lace, take care of business, man. Shout out to her. I love it to this day, man. Thank you so much. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love Great that. Great person. So then take me to after you after you lose the job, I want to get closer to when you start reaching for the mic and what epiphany was going on to, to get you there. OK, to be honest with you, let me rewind. I was on the mic and actually this last job I had was after the, the signing with Too Short, traveling the country, uh, uh, touring making records and stuff like that and stuff not, not quite panning out and rap. And, and, and I was working a job and kind of seeing rap, the rap dream of the window getting smaller and working a job. And when I lost a job that with the, with the rap dream and the window getting smaller to me, that kind of just, you know, that kind of put me in a rut and I yeah. was in a rut for a, a little while, you know, doing odd things, odds and ends, just different things to keep me some money going on. I was a CD man. I used to bake cakes. I, I love baking, so I, w- I would bake cakes and, and cut the motherfuckers up to the slices and go up to the barbershop by my house and sell cakes. And brothers was fucking with me, man, you know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, real shit, you know? Again, because, you know, after, you know, in between, you know, losing after losing the job and all that, and, you know, just odd jobs here and there, uh, you know, again, I was selling weed mm-hmm. to make me some, you know, make supplement my income, you know, kind of keep, keep the lights on or whatever. I got cracked. With the weed. I was already on probation for some shit, oh, and I was no. selling the weed, and I got cracked again. So, <sighs> and I got cracked right when I first started. By this time, we're going to be fast forwarding. By this time, uh, this is 2010. I'm selling weed, you know, doing all right. Uh, opportunities are coming to life for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just got GTA 5. I just got uh, okay. 
you know, cast with GTA five, did a, did some work over there, you know, still selling weed on the side to, you know, kind of keep my lights on. Mm-hmm. And uh, shit, I got cracked by the LA Sheriff's Department. They pulled me over, you know, found some weed on, in my car, and that was before it was legal. Mm-hmm. They found some weed in my car, and uh, I was already on probation for some other dumb shit. So they used that as, an, you know, they used that as a reason to search my house. And, you know, they found some stuff in my house that I wasn't supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had to go sit down in the county jail for about five months. You know what I'm saying? I was facing uh, I was facing about eight, 13 years or something. But thanks to the people over there, Rockstar, you know, they wrote letters on my behalf. Uh, my boy Brian Ash, my boy Carl Jones, my boy Aaron Magruder, uh, Jason Van Veen, Van Elder. All, I had a lot of great people around me that wrote letters, you know, on my behalf. And I think that kind of helped me in regards to how I was sentenced. Because when I got caught for that beef, I told you I was on probation, but yeah. I had a joint suspension. If you don't know what a joint suspension is, it's basically meaning, okay, we're going to let you out, but if you get in trouble again, you're going to go to jail for this time. Oh, we're gonna, you're going to go to jail for this. Is it like this. the three strikes, you're out type thing, it's similar not, to that? It's, it's not three strikes. It's basically saying, okay, we're going to give you four years in jail, but mm-hmm. well, we're going to suspend that. We're going to let you out. But if you get caught for something else, you're going to get that four years off top. And, and that's not counting with whatever time oh, you're going to get no. for what you get caught for. You understand oh, me? Pressure's on for real. Yeah, the pressure was on. So I beat a uh, 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 joint suspension and, you know, I got another chance. And from there, when I got out of jail that time, wait a minute, look at that baloney. Look, that shit beautiful. Uh-huh. That shit beautiful. You see that nice little uh, uh, sear? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So... Right now, I'm trying to pay attention to that baloney. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make sure I'm going to hit it with that yeast. You got to put that yeast because you got two slices. I'm a big man. You got to have at least two slices. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you put you some yeast. You take you a little piece of yeast and put it right in between the two slices. You feel me? And oh. Let it kinda, oh, wee. You let it oh, wee a little bit. Oh, wee. I oh, did not wee. expect. Okay, okay. So you put the cheese in between the two baloney yeah, slices. Okay, good. okay. Little, you know. Let do like that a little bit. But yeah, um, when I got out of jail, when I, I got out of jail, I was back on another joint suspension on probation, and I had a talk with God and Aaron Magruder. Okay. And, you know, when I got out of jail that time, Aaron gave me the, the same kind of speech that, you know, uh, Puffy is said to have given Big, you know what I'm saying, in the movie at least, you know, hey, what you want. You want this or you want that. You can't do both. Yeah. And at that point, I said, okay, I can't do no, no more crime. I'm not going to do nothing to jeopardize my life because I have these opportunities ahead of me. So, you know, I struggled for a few years before those opportunities came into fruition, but I'm thankful that I trusted God and I trusted the people that I was working with to see those things go come to fruition again. 2013, GTA 5 came out. 2014, Black Jesus came out. And it kind of you know, kind of let people know who I who I am. So mm-hmm. that was dope. So we're gonna take this little bread. We ain't for the burn this shit. We're gonna take it here. Go ahead, get that little bread mm-hmm. in there. See that little cheese, that real cheese, baby. Wow. You got it, you got it. It looks official. It, it is, it is. That motherfucker's official. Okay, like cheese sticking. Eh. Now, you do that like that. Ooh. We're gonna get that okay, little, this looks legit. Little bit more, put that motherfucker right there. Look at yeah. you. Is this when you put the lettuce on? Yeah, you put you a little lettuce on there because you know what I'm saying? You want to eat healthy, you know what I mean, a little bit. You know, a lot of people a lot of people got problems with, uh, you know, uh, these uh, sandwich meats and, 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 and processed meats and things of that nature because mm-hmm. they don't, you don't know what's in it. Nigga, I say this, unless you killed that, self, they killed that shit yourself, you don't never know what's in it. So fuck it, eat. You know what I'm saying? You know what's in that shit. Okay, well, so this is how you eat. Ate eating, it. There's no, uh, what eat, are you doing? Eating healthy costs you a grip. You put chips on your, yeah, I'm doing it the way you do it. Put you some chips on that motherfucker, girl. I thought the lettuce was going to add the extra crunch. It's going to add a little okay. bit, but you know that the lettuce is to add the health. You know, you got you some some little vegetable on there, but you know, lettuce ain't it's mostly water, they say, right? Mm-hmm. But it's all good. Then you take that motherfucker, you hit it with a, yeah. Oh, yeah, you see yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. You see okay, that? I'm excited, You all right. see that? And then, look, this is why I like the little melted cheese. I don't know if y'all can see that right there. Mm-hmm. A little cheese. You take that little chip and go, eh, eh, get that. You don't let nothing go. Eh. I don't let nothing go. All right, Very here we cool. go for a taste test. Mm. Mm. Warm it, warm it, warm it, warm it. I don't even know. Mm. You're hilarious. You want them to look, hear it, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, you know what? Now, we ain't even hit it off with no mustard. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm on two bites in. His off with a little bit. Oh, it's brand new muscle. Mm-hmm. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Open up that little muscle. Now, personally, I like spicy brown muscle. Oh. But classic yellow always go. So let me um uh, let me shake it up because I want Shake it. We don't want the water out. I don't want the little pre-cum on my sandwich. That's, that shit is horrible. I want to add more chips. Too. Go ahead, girl. Wait, I want I'm trying Jared. to do yours the way. Jared, don't eat that shit. What the shout outs to Jared, by the way. I not, not we and, and we ain't talking about we ain't talking about the subway nigga neither. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Another bite. I'm actually enjoying this sandwich. Mm-hmm. Mm. This one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you always do it with the chips? When, when I, it depends on what level of struggle I'm at. Let me just tell you something. The chips, the chips, the the mustard, the real cheese, the lettuce. It's a good sandwich. Doesn't make you like. Does it? Does it nostalgic for you at all? Very nostalgic. I came up on bologna sandwiches, man. Again, being born in the South. You know, I ate a lot of uh, lunch meats and things of that nature, man. And hell yeah, you know, my mom used to serve us some bologna sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? Didn't have no cheese, goddamn it, just bologna and bread. But it worked, you know what I'm saying? So it was very nostalgic for me. I'm going in for And, and this is always good because it's about 15, 20 slices or, or more in this motherfucker. So you can probably make about six, seven decent sandwiches, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to think about what you're doing. When you really struggling, you start looking at shit like how many ounces shit is. You know what I'm saying? Like recently I just bought some ketchup and I saw one was like 32 ounces and then the other one was like, it, it was bigger, but it was it was cheaper to buy the bigger one. Mm-hmm. It was, The bigger one was more expensive, but it was like damn near buying two of those smaller mm-hmm. ones for, you know. And I wanted to address that. This whole dish cost $6. Mm-hmm. Whole loaf of bread. Whole thing of lettuce, whole thing of bologna, and real cheese. It was like seven dollars, and you're getting multiple meals, so this totally works. And I don't know if it's because we're both starving, but is this sandwich not? It's really good, huh? That motherfucker's smacking. Yeah, it's smacking. I'm trying not to. I can't, you know, I can't interview you and eat the whole thing, but this thing is really, really good. See, and I like, you know, it's seven dollars, eight dollars. Mm-hmm. Just say ten. Mm-hmm. Just say ten. Mm-hmm. If you got a wet twenty, you still got. You can buy this. Get you a look. Spend about nine. Just say nine. Mm-hmm. Spend about nine. You got eleven dollars back. You can go buy you spend a buck and go buy you a blunt, and you can go buy you a nice fat dime sack from somebody. You're hilarious. And smoke you some weed. You're hilarious. Mm-hmm. Okay, so take us back to so 2013, 2014. You're getting all these opportunities. Your pockets are looking better. Mm-hmm. And like, where's your head at? Like, are you like I made it? That's it. I'm stunting on everybody or what? No, I didn't really have that uh, that real vindictive spirit to stunt on everybody, mm-hmm. but I was definitely enjoying the things that were happening for me. Mm-hmm. I was definitely, you know, liking to be able to go in to stores I've always went into mm-hmm. and be able to buy whatever I want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was always cool. But, mm-hmm. you know, again... These things happened to, for me at this at a certain point in my life. I think I it came with a certain level of maturity as well and enough foresight to know that, you know, it's this it's like this today and can be different tomorrow. So yeah. I kinda always try to keep my attitude and the way I deal with people even killed mm-hmm. in that regard. Were you good with your money as far as like managing no. it? No. So no. were you I have a friend. I'm broke as fuck right now. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a, a one friend that, like, he'll make a million dollars and he'll be rich driving Rolls Royces in the next minute, stupid broke, and, like, literally eating carrots out of a bag. That's like, how I go. He had a good time, though. Yeah, yeah, and it's literally been that way for, like, 20 years. I I've took my him. baby mama to the Maldives for a birthday in September. When we got home, we ate chili dogs. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Are you still with your baby moms? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Well, I got three of them, so I'm with one of them. Oh, okay, okay. You're not with the original OG. 
Nah, but that's my family. I love her to death, and I always will. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the next? So at this point, you feel like you've made it. Like, kind of explain a day in the life. Mm. <laughs> a day in the life while I'm working mm -hmm. on an active series is different than a day in the life, just a regular day in the life. Because, mm -hmm. you know, again, when I'm in the middle of a season, it's always great get up early in the morning, drive away. Matter of fact, we shot, excuse me, we shot season three of Black Jesus right down the street here. Okay. And uh, get up in the morning, come on set, eat up their food, you know, enjoy all the white man amenities and, you know, have a great time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, my day in the life is different for me. It can be a little bit of anything. Mm -hmm. Like right now, you know, I'm, I get up every day. I shoot my sketches every day, mm -hmm. uh, take my calls, my emails, try to line up new shows and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But, you know, I don't know. It, it just depends. Every day is different just like anybody else. I have no... Oh, I go to the gym every day at 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah. I have two protein powder shakes at 7. I don't know. I don't, you know. When, when you're not, when you're, so when you're in the middle of a series, you have consistent money, consistent work coming in. Mm -hmm. When you're not, is there any, like, little seeds of doubt entering your mind? Or is there any, like, what am I doing? Is there any second guessing going on? All the time. I'm human. You want another one? Yeah, I do. I feel like we should get more cheese. More cheese and more bread. <laughs> we got... Yeah, more bread. All right, go on. Um, um, yeah, I'm human, so those seeds of doubt always happen. And I'm, I just have to, damn it, it's part of myself. I just have to snap out of it. Mm -hmm. What do you do to snap out of it? I, I just remember, I just tell myself, man, how many times have you been in this situation? Mm -hmm. How many times has, has, has have you been broke? How many times have you had no car? Mm -hmm. How many times, you know, these things happen, and they happen all the time, man. We built for this shit. I make it through. Yeah. That's why I'm still alive today. You know, some weak people be rich as fuck. Stock market crash, they jump out the window. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, hell, I just know it's going to get better. It's always better days. It's just like this right now. And I just want to tell anybody that's listening, look, man, you're an artist, creative, entrepreneur. You got dreams. Keep dreaming and keep working towards them, man. Don't worry about what's going on right now because right now is just right now. Don't worry about the win. Just know you're going to win. You feel me? Yeah. Fuck all that bullshit. It's all right, man. Today I'm eating bologna. Tomorrow it might be motherfucking lobster mac. God damn it, I don't know. And the next day after that, it might be popcorn. But guess what? I'm still smiling. I'm still standing on 10 toes. And I'm still a real nigga out here. And what I have is my heart and my integrity and the love and blessing of God. So I ain't worried about nothing. I'm straight. I like that. Uh, I like that a lot. When, <clears throat> when you, you like are, the bologna sandwich. I like, I like, I, like the, the, the bologna sandwich is so good. I'm trying not to eat it during our whole episode so I could actually talk and I don't not care, talk about it. You're going to see real nigga particles and shit because I'm eating bologna with cheese and, and, and lettuce. Don't worry about it. You want, you want too, motherfucker. Yeah, so. Do you have people in your circle that are constantly like when you're in doubt, like picking you back up or reminding you what your purpose is? Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Um, absolutely. My girl, she, she's very supportive of me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate her for that. You know, I got a couple of homeboys that always call me with some words of wisdom, some game, man. Shout out to my boy Andre Truth, man. Y'all make sure y'all check him out. We got a new, we got a series together on Amazon right now mm -hmm. called um, Sellies. Check it out. Sellies. Okay. C uh, uh, C E L L I E S Sellies on Amazon. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta pardon me. I'm I'm eating real food. He's See, that's what y'all don't have. <laughs> on Hollywood, the motherfuckers be like be dainty and eat mm -mm, and barely eat, be hungry as a motherfucker. We're gonna eat this shit for real. Go ahead, girl, eat that shit. Ain't nobody fucked up about it. Cause if, if you don't eat, something wrong with you. I will say this though. In regards to the sandwich. I think the secret ingredient is definitely the mustard. Now, next time, try that spicy brown that mustard. spicy brown? Try that spicy bread now. Mm -hmm. You're going to love that. That's been nicey bread now. That's been nicey bread now. Now, in the world of social media, mm -hmm. is that also like a frustrating turn for you? Or is it like a different beast? Like, how do you view it? It's, it's a different beast. Um... Well, I mean, I don't know what could be frustrating. The only thing frustrating about it is, you know, you don't want to see what everybody else got to say all the time. But, you know, hey, what, it's, it's just a different beast, man. You know, it's the world we live in. 
And, you know, we got to learn to adapt. And I think for me, I came in at a time, um, you know, I was born in the era right before, you know, uh, right before this information age or whatever they like to call it. And I kind of came in it. So I wasn't necessarily raised in it, mm -hmm. but I came early enough to understand it. So, you know, it is what it is. Social media is one large facade and you just got to know how to navigate it. Now, have you, you've been in the game a long time. Have you seen some peers of yours surpass you? And how did you feel about it? Like, how did you feel about it internally? Like, if you had to be fully transparent. I see a lot of people, uh, a lot of my peers, you know, making advances. I wouldn't necessarily say surpass. That ain't the word I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm in my own lane, mm -hmm. you passing me is of no, mm -hmm. it don't, I'm in my lane. Yeah. So, but I've seen a lot of people make advancements that that, that are advancing, you know, and, and more power to them. You know, do I think they're the most talented people? No. There are there are a lot of very talented people that are making advancements, and shout out to them. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that are not as advanced, that are not as talented, mm -hmm. that are making advancements. And I'm going to shout out them, too, because whatever it takes to get you there, I mean, if the people like it, hey, man, if, they, if you like it, I love it. You know, but I don't necessarily, you know, think everybody's the dopest, but... You know, and how do I feel about it? I don't trip because uh, Aaron Magruder told me a long time ago, don't count another nigga pockets. Don't yeah. worry about what another nigga got going on. So uh, you know. I agree with that. But even me personally, I saw in the last year some people that came out nine months ago, six months ago, and they just, when I say flew past the line, you know, I mean, I'm just saying personally, like I definitely had those, like, what the fuck? I mean, I, like, guess really? it, I guess it is a bit frustrating Mm -hmm. To see, you know, some of these wiener dudes, you know, uh, in some positions in which you feel like, you know, again, I'm be honest with you, we human, so I, you know, sometimes I feel like some of you niggas is undeserving of some of the shit you get. But that's how I be feeling sometimes. But who am I to say what you deserve? Only God knows what you deserve. So again, so, and, and even sometimes, you know, you see these people making these advancements, you know, going up to the top. It might not really be the top they going. It mm -hmm. might, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, they they see some extreme highs only to be led to some extreme lows, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. And so you got to be mindful of that, you know? It'd be, it's a lot of sh people dealing with a lot of shit behind the scenes. Some of these famous and powerful people deal with a lot of shit behind the scenes that, uh, you know, a lot of us don't and a lot of us aren't built for, so. Well, I will, I will say that, too. Like, sometimes when someone rises that fast, that fall could be even more painful. Oh, absolutely, man. Juvenile said it the best, that overnight money could be lose your life money. I mean, it's cool. You know, that that ascension is, is definitely a great thing to experience. However, I believe that, you know, you have to be prepared for that type of altitude. You can ascend fast, but if you ain't got the right gear the air thin up there, you ain't going to be able to breathe. So you got to at least, you know, make sure you got the right shit, you know, on your ascension. If you had to choose between being famous and well-known, because you're already well-known. If you had to choose between being famous and well-known and having, or having healthy pockets. And Man, give me the money any day. Fuck this fame. <laughs> this fame is some bullshit. Look here. The, the, the richest motherfucker don't have to say nothing. He's still the loudest motherfucker in the room because money moves shit. So fuck this fame. It's nice. I enjoy the support that, 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 that people, you know, they fuck with me. They fuck with my craft. They fuck with my brand. I really enjoy it. I support it. Thank you. I do that, and that's why I do it, because for the support, for the fans. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Thank you. And, you know, all that stuff translate to money eventually down the line. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to answer your question, the fame or the money, give me the money. I, I, I'd i rather be the anonymous nigga in, in executive class, laying down on the plane to, to goddamn uh, 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 Bali or something. You know what I mean? Now here's my other devil's advocate question. Now, if you had to choose between uh, the success of being known or the success of money, like having a lot of money, or being broke doing what you love, I'd rather have the money. Really? I'd rather have the money because when you got the money, you still going to do what you love. You better. I got the money now. I'm really going to do what I love. I got the money. And the money without the fame, without the hassle of, you know, people, you know, trying to get at you or get your attention all the time. Hey, man, I'll take the money because I'm still going to do what I love. With, with, with money and anonymity, 
I could be a rich bum. I could be a fly on the wall. I got yeah. the best of both worlds. I can I can fly yeah. first class and I can I can sit in the pissy corner and look at everybody people watch and and, and not you know what I'm saying? And, and you twenty years ago, do you think your answer would still be the same? Uh yeah. Really? Twenty years ago I think the answer because you know, again, I'm an older dude, man, and I think uh you damn right, I for a long time it's been about the money. You know, I love the craft, I love the art. And the fame is a byproduct. If I can, if I can do the art, get the money, mm -hmm. and, and, and don't have to have the fame, mm -hmm. I, I do it. Okay. But the fame is a byproduct of doing your art, doing your craft. You do it well. That's a byproduct of it. So I accept that. I accept the good with the bad, the bad with the good. Were there any points in your career where, if you could go back in time or personal life, you would redo something all over again? Nope. Nothing. Because redoing one thing might change the outcome of everything else. Okay, I'm just saying, even if it didn't, I'm just saying, is there anything in your life where you were like, if I could go back, I would have done X, Y, Z a little differently? You know what? I think about the worst shit, you know, like, you know, going to jail. And, and I still say no because, again, what I learned there, the connections I made in there mm -hmm. are probably more valuable than... Anything that I, you know, again. In jail, you said? In jail. I made some, some I met some great friends. Really? And I got some good game. You know what I mean? I think that that helped with my brand of comedy as well. You okay. know what I mean? So did I, going through it? No, nah, I didn't want to go through it. But looking back, I see how it strengthened me and it didn't help me. So isn't anything I'll change? I, I'm pretty sure it, nothing I could just call out right now without mm -hmm. making somebody else feel bad. But. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Give me some bread, man. You need some more bread because I'm finna eat this sandwich. You like could, Rasmussen say, she say sandwich. You could eat it because we're gonna um mm -hmm. we're gonna need you to take some pictures with something later. Huh? You can go ahead. I'll I'll I'm gonna use it to make uh we'll use that piece to make uh take pictures with later. Let me take pictures with that when I turn mm -hmm. it off. Girl, you playing with me, girl. I'm hungry. Look at shit. It, look, look, you are really so right now, would you say you're rich or would you say you're you're not doing bologna sandwiches, obviously, but Oh, I'm financially impaired. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're owning it, though. I'm financially impaired. It's cool, though. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid of it. Hmm. You're embracing it. Why do you feel like not perpetrating? Because there's a lot of people that would say, "I'm gonna perpetrate. I'm a. I'm hmm. a. I'm gonna promote this image." Um. Because it's too hard to keep up a lie. Niggas see me out here. Mm -hmm. Niggas see me in full for less. Mm -hmm. Niggas see my credit card decline. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fake jewelry make my, my my neck turn green. I don't like driving other niggas' cars. Mm -hmm. Fuck all that perpetration shit because at the end of the day, I can only be me. Mm -hmm. And if I try to be a me for you, mm -hmm. it's going to clash when the time when I need to be me for me. So, you know, it is what it is. One day, look, I got a, look, I got a pair of $800 Gucci shoes on right now. Mm-hmm. I got about forty dollars in my bank account. Mm -hmm. I ain't tripping. I ain't trying to look rich. I ain't trying to uh, 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 perpetrate as poor. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, know? I think that the authenticity is is needed because we're in the Instagram age where you know everyone promotes the highlight reels, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some guy that's like watching you, and they're like, "Wow," you know, and they're maybe trying to live up to an image, but if you're actually transparent, you're allowing them to kind of be more vulnerable and more real with themselves, right? Yeah, my nigga, it's hard out here. It's hard out here for a pimp and even harder for a hoe. You know what I'm saying? What's up with the fascination of pimping? Like, is there something in particular that fascinates you about it? Or are you just good with the ladies? I was always fascinated. What about it fascinated you? Um... What what young man wouldn't want the attention and adoration of all the ladies? What young man wouldn't want to be good with the ladies? You know, uh, what young man, especially in this world right now, where, you know, we, we, we brought and raised to cater to women. Now, again, I'm not saying right or wrong, but, you know, who don't want a, a pretty, beautiful woman coming, you know, putting it in your hand? You know what I'm saying? Putting what money in that your hand? Money, baby. But that's what I'm saying. So pimping, pimping, technically is like guys, uh, you know, playing women, right? It's like a misogynist type. 
Well, you know, I'm not a pimp, so I'm not really, I'm not really uh, at liberty to speak on yeah. what the pimping is. I do believe that I got the ism in me, but I've never taken the, uh, taking the full steps it takes to become a pimp. So I don't really want to speak on what, what, you know, in that regard, you know. So what you're I mean? saying like the only thing you like about pimping is like the the atten- the the attention. You I know, mean, like like you're cool. a good la- you're a good ladies man. Like you're good with the women. That's yeah, what you're the, saying. the mystique of it all. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Being this fly dashing guy that you know the ladies not not the the caricature uh, of a pimp that we see in comedies and things mm-hmm. of that nature. And you know, I take pimping to a whole different level. Personally, I say. Anytime you're good at something and you know how to make it work for you, you pimping it. You're an author, you're a songwriter, you pimping your pen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're a mechanic, you're, you're an artist, you do things with your hands, you pimping your hands. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pimp it, whatever it is, pimp it. Be, be, be your own pimp. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Put it in your pocket. Put it in my yeah. pocket. But when you're talking about pimping, you're not talking about relations to money, though. Excuse me? Not really. You're not really. I'm not talking. I'm not always necessarily talking mm-hmm. about women on the blade re- yeah, reporting course, to me and, and giving me money. And pimping ain't always, um, you know, having a woman sell her body for you. It's a lot of pimps, or um, or they may be uh, called max. It's a lot of dudes out here getting money from women that work regular jobs yeah. or they work good jobs. You know, if she taking care of you, you know what I'm saying, if she turning it into you, it don't matter where it's coming from, you know, yeah, it's yeah. pimping. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. So what advice would you give to a young gunner, a young comedian that's trying to get in the game? Don't stop, my nigga. Don't stop and don't doubt yourself. If you know you funny, be funny and let the motherfuckers come to you. You ain't got to get up there and dance with no rubber chicken. You ain't got to do what the other niggas is doing. You ain't got to go wear no tight ass pants or or or, 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 or talk in these, uh, these uh, strange tones. And act a certain way. If you funny, just be funny, man, and let them come to you. And they're going to come to you, man. They're going to come to you. Consistency is the key. My friend Carlos Miller told me, man, if you want to win in this business, it's about consistency. So if you're dropping a podcast, you're dropping some content, and you tell the people it's coming on a certain day, you make sure you give it to them every time. <coughs> mm-hmm. Excuse me. And it's a numbers game. You know, just keep going. It might seem bleak. I don't put a hundred of these out. Ain't nobody. Well, it might be 101 that the motherfucker catch fire for you. So you just got to keep going. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been actually personally noticing that with myself. Wow, what a great uh, time. I will say, though, uh, off camera, we've we've been hanging out for a while now uh, before we started taping. Mm-hmm. I would say you're more naturally funny. You're You're quick with it. And I, I, you know, sometimes I, I see comedians and it, it seems like they're working at it. But you, I could have a conversation and be like, you know, there's like five jabs of funny within <laughs> like three sentences of hanging out with you. And I, I, I remember we, I noticed that earlier. I was like, wow, you're really fast. You're like fast with your punches. I only smoked two blunts this morning, so I'm, you know, I'm mm-hmm. good. And what's up with the cigarettes? You gonna give up the cigarettes, man? You shouldn't have said that. Why? I don't smoke cigarettes. Oh, okay. I thought. The awkwardness of that. I feel like <laughs> I feel like your mom or your girls watching. Like, oh no, I, I've been lying to her about cigarette smoking. I don't smoke cigarettes. No, you don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll revisit that off camera. <laughs> Anyways, tell the tell the listeners where we could keep up with you. Oh wow, uh, social media is man big man. You know everybody got it man. You want to get in touch with me the quickest way and the fastest way when you want a response. You want to get in touch with Slink Johnson. You can always hit me up at Cash App. Dollar sign Slink Johnson. Hit me up a cash app or Venmo at Slink Johnson. But if you just want to like some pictures or, you know, subscribe or follow, you can always hit me on all your social media networks at Slink Johnson. <laughs> you just reminded me when uh, I couldn't get a hold of the publicist that booked you. So I was like trying, I was like going through Instagram, like logging on both platforms, trying to ding you, ding the publicist. I somehow got through, but. I DM'd you, and I was like, I don't know if he's going to see this DM, but now I know the best way would be I'll just cash app you with a note. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. I have. I, where are you? <laughs> Here's my number. I never thought of that, but that is that is a good way oh, to I'm have I'm going to hit you right back. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, guys. If you really need to get a message through this link, 
That is the number one way to do it. Dollar sign Slink S L I N K Johnson J O H N S O N Slink Johnson. And is no Black spaces. Jesus coming back or? Uh, the white man has, has told me nothing. However, I'm going to be optimistic. I don't want y'all out there in 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 internet land quoting me on it because mm-hmm. ain't a white man ain't told me shit. But I'm an optimist and I'm gonna say yes. Okay, I'm an optimist and I'm gonna say yes with you. And then come come by anytime. Use our space. We love having you. You're a pleasure to be here with. Did you check out my Jay-Z painting in the lobby? Yes, that motherfucker's dope. And it's dope. My mama painted hey, it. Hey, man, she's a talented motherfucker. You know, mama, you're a talented motherfucker. She keeps uh, telling me to sell it to Jay-Z. Why don't you call Jay-Z and sell it to him? I'm like, Mom, first of all, it's the <laughs> only one in the world, and I'm not selling it. Mm-hmm. But um, but I don't know if Jay-Z wants you. <laughs> like, you like, Jay, Jay. <laughs> Holler at us, man. We got some artwork you, you know want on your saying? wall, man. The one, one the one of a kind. One of a kind. I think if Jay-Z came up in here. He want that motherfucker. He would want it. He would. But I told my mom that I've uh, pitched his publicist and attached it to pictures along with a bunch of other people that I know that have sent him or said they sent it to him. And he hasn't reached out yet. He yeah. want one of these sandwiches, he, too. He gonna want one of those Jay, sandwiches. when was the last time you had a bologna sandwich? Nigga, damn, look at that shit. That's how you look here. When was the last time you baked a cake? Hmm. Couple years. Really? I was, you know, after you said you bake cakes and sell them, I was like, damn, he should have brought a cake. A nice cake would have been nice. You different know? time in my life. Different time. It's the holidays. I might make a nice German chocolate. Yeah, you know what I like is that, uh, what is the upside down cake with mm-hmm. the pineapple? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Mama, shit, I love those. Oh my goodness. Can you make one? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's what we need. All right, guys. Huh? From scratch, from scratch. Well, you know what? I may uh, cash app you. How much would you charge for a kick like that? Mm. How much? We'll, we'll look, all your all, all your fans gonna be cash apping you for cakes. <laughs> Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. All right, guys. All right. Peace out.